just for the sake of it. Did I put makeup on my handle? Probably. Probably. So annoying. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a first impressions review of the Bully 27 because I have actually been asked for this quite a lot to film a review. Um, but I haven't owned the bag for like long enough for me to feel as though I can do a really in-depth review. However, I can at least do a first impressions kind of slash review a bit. Uh, before I dive into today's video, if you are new to my channel and you love luxury videos and you especially love Hermes, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos, which is twice a week on a Wednesday and on a weekend. So it is actually late at night. This is actually the second uh, video that I'm filming tonight. So, um... And my son is teething, so my makeup is pretty much wearing away. I have pretty much no lipstick on whatsoever. But we are going to film this video because I'm hoping that he's going to at least sleep for an hour. So I can get this done and then jump in the shower and then I can go to sleep myself. Sorry, life story. Okay. Um, mum life. Now, this bag is obviously the Believe 27. It does come with a strap, which is in this dust bag here. So that is super duper important that it comes with a strap because it's a top handle, but it has a removable adjustable strap, which I absolutely love. Uh, this bag is in Epsom and the color is in Cray, which is a beautiful neutral. So super duper coveted, very popular, technically not a permanent color from Hermes, but you would almost think, it, think that it is because it always resurfaces. Um, gold hardware as well. So gold zipper, gold d-ring and gold d-ring on the opposite side as well when you do get a bully 27 it will obviously come in the hermes box it is in a fairly big box this is probably yeah this is actually bigger than the box that i got for my kelly 25 so it's a big box same sort of style as well where it has uh the wrap and then you'll get a dust bag and there is like a pillow for the bag too you also get a rain cover so you do get a rain cover with the believe 27 and you also get a care booklet now i have an interesting fact for you guys the believe the believe bag in general is actually the first ever handbag that hermes ever released because hermes was actually traditionally and originally an equestrian bag uh, an equestrian brand so they i know that my lighting changes sorry my lighting just changed i've seen it. it's because i put like that orange thing the orange box in front so just ignore that um but hermes was an equestrian brand only so they made saddles and equestrian equipment and then um the founder originator i suppose um wanted to create a travel bag for his wife and he created uh the bullied i believe based on records it used to be called torpedo is that that travel bag that he actually made was released in 1923 okay i think it might have been 19 94 that they actually changed it to the bleed but technically it was first ever released in 1923 as if it was the torpedo or perhaps it was another name, but it wasn't called the Belide. However, it was when they renamed it to the Belide, it still was exactly this. It was the same bag, it was still this bag. You would have noticed that Hermes now has a 1923 Belide and it is modeled after the original 1923 shape and version. Because the 1923 Belide is a little bit different to the current Belide that we know now. So yeah, 1923, first ever handbag that Hermes created and I get like this a lot when I re when I um, first uh, revealed the Bleed a lot of people was like that looks like the Louis Vuitton Alma but the Louis Vuitton Alma actually came after the Bleed it came well after I think maybe the Louis Vuitton Alma came in 1984 but yeah the Bleed was released in 1923 so uh, this bag was around well before the Alma if anyone's copied anyone Louis Vuitton have copied Hermes, okay? If we're going to say who's copied who, it's definitely Louis Vuitton has, has copied Hermes because they had this shape of the bag first. They had this, this this style of the bag first. So let's talk about pricing. So obviously I'm an Australian, so I shop in Australian dollars. The price on this when I bought this um, 
at the end of July uh, was $8,755 for Epsom. The current price, if you were to get it in Swift leather, which is the other option, uh, is $9,685 for the Bleed 27. We are only talking the Bleed 27 today. Um, last year, funnily enough, the Bleed was actually uh, $8,905 in Epsom leather. So they've actually done a decrease this year in 2020 for the Bleed 27 in Epsom, which is interesting. Hermes does that. Sometimes they have increased, sometimes, sometimes they have decreases. Usually they don't have decreases on their popular bags like the Birkin and Kelly, but some of their other bags can have decreases as well. And this happened to have a decrease. So that's kind of cool. So I'm glad that it came this year rather than last year, because I have been wanting this bag for quite some time. It was firmly on my 2020 wish list, the Bleed 27. So I'm glad that I have ticked it off. And it is called the 27 because it's 27 centimeters across. Now the size is, okay, yeah, it is exactly, it is exactly 27 centimeters. You might not be able to see that, but it is is exactly 27 centimeters and then the actual width of the bag will go by the base even though the base is the widest point it does trapeze in like the Kelly so the width is um, 10 centimeters and then the height of the bag that's just to that point there the actual height is 19 centimeters and the strap drop is uh, 10 centimeters so it has a 10 centimeter strap drops this is um quite thin sort of handles but they do pinch together so when you're holding it like a top handle they come together anyway even though they are thin and narrow and the strap length i believe this is actually the same strap length as like the kelly bag anyway yeah and this is the same 95 centimeters see that like i was pointing out before the d-rings are up there and up here so they are opposite sides to one another and the way that you attach the strap is on the inside so you would just clip it on the inside and then again on the other side on the inside as well it's a little bit fiddly because the ring pushes towards the leather sometimes when you're trying to clip it and then you don't want to scratch the leather so you've got to be careful with that so that's how it sort of hangs and it hangs beautifully on the body even though it's like opposite side to opposite side you also because it sits on your shoulder you don't have any issues getting in and out of the bag while it's obviously on your shoulder anyway I don't have any problems with it I often if I need to I just leave the bag open if I want easy access I kind of like just zip it one third of the way and then leave it open so it's a really nice secure handbag it is not double zipped so it is only one way zip so there's not two zippers that meet or anything you can only open and close it the one way one of the things that i do notice because of the way that the d-rings are um you actually get if you look at the bag from this way if i can kind of show you if it will focus in you see here it's kind of pushing you see how it looks like it's warped just either side where the D-ring is, it kind of pushes in. So you kind of get like, sort of like an indentation, like a, a warping of the zipper. And that's because the way that the bag hangs when it's on your shoulder, it's just that these hooks just lean against the leather. So it does push it into that shape and it just stays like that. There's really nothing you can sort of do about it. It is what it is. So the Bleed 27 and the Mini Bleed are definitely my favorite sizes for the Bleed. They do have bigger sizes. They've got the Bleed 31, they have, the um, 1923 Bleed, Bleed 35 as well. There's a Bleed 40. Um, yeah, so there is quite a lot of sizes, but I do like those two smaller sizes. Now, the biggest thing I absolutely love about this bag is that it is so, so, so lightweight. Like, honestly, it is so light. I haven't weighed the bag, but I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna weigh it later on because obviously it's late at night. I'm gonna put on the screen what the actual weight is. Um, but yeah, I find this so super duper lightweight, so lightweight. Like my Kelly 25 is really lightweight because it's in Swift, so it feels like that to me. So this is why I absolutely love this bag. The only downfall with this bag is that obviously you can't really wear it crossbody unless you go ahead and get a crossbody strap. It is exclusively only top handle, crook of the arm, and on the shoulder only. Um, crossbody I think it could work if you had the longer strap however you might find that because the handles are they do sit up a bit higher than say like the Kelly Kelly handle um, you probably need to have a decent length crossbody in order for those handles not to be annoying and not to be kind of like up underneath you sort of thing uh, the inside of the bag I've just got my rain cover in there right now it was actually stuff like this as well this is what I got from the store like it came with kind of like a dust bag thing with um, 
uh, air pockets inside so that's the inside it is actually lined with swift and that's the only other downfall as well is that it does actually scratch easily on the inside because it is lined with swift and that would be why it is so lightweight because swift is a really lightweight le uh, leather I already have some marks inside the bag unfortunately um, I've got like a mark up there and because it's a light color obviously it can be easy to mark there is only one little pocket inside it's just there and I pretty much don't ever use it oh what is in there oh I got a McDonald's thing the Monopoly thing <laughs> Yeah, so there's just a pocket in there, not a zip pocket like the Kelly. Uh, the Kelly has a pocket like that and then a zip pocket as well. So it is limited on organization capacity. It could definitely do with an organizer inside. I hope that Seven Rue Paradise makes an organizer for this, I hope, in the future. Um, only time will tell, but yeah, definitely hope that they do. Um, if you're after a Seven Rue Paradise uh, insert, the best Hermes inserts that you can get, description uh, details will be in the description bar including um, my coupon code with them so yeah no insert unfortunately and I will not be using any other insert because I don't trust other inserts I've used them before and they have always just done damage to my bag so I'm not risking it not risking it for the biscuit it's not happening I'll just full go using an insert and just have to deal and hope that seven root paradise makes an insert at some point um some other things that I like about the bag is that it's an incognito kind of bag. It doesn't scream that it's a brand. So, it, yeah, but it's so beautiful as well. Like, it looks so classy, so chic, um, really elegant looking, uh, beautiful, well made, but no one knows it's a brand. Like, unless you know Hermes, then you know. But, like, the average person won't know that this is a brand. It doesn't scream, like, Louis Vuitton or Chanel or anything like that. It doesn't scream Hermes. I feel as though that this is quite suitable for pretty much all occasions, in my opinion. I think you can use it to go out to dinner, just take the straps off and use it as a top handle. But I still think you could use it with the straps on. I think it's a really nice size for either occasions. Running errands, going to the grocery store, just going for a girl's day out shopping, going for a dinner date, whatever. I think it's a really versatile bag. I think that it's absolutely beautiful. Um, obviously, it's available also in Swift as well. Swift would be a little bit more casual looking, I feel. like I feel like because this is Epsom and it holds structure really well, it definitely makes the bag a little bit more elegant and a bit more dressy than what perhaps Swift would look like. But I still think Swift is a beautiful leather. And I personally, if I had a Swift bleed, I would still use it to go out as well for a dinner or anything. I just think that this bag is beautiful. It has really taken my breath away. I could totally buy another Bleed 27. That's how much I love it. I 100% would buy another one in a heartbeat. I think it's a great bag. I hope that next year when they do a price increase that it doesn't go up too much. Um, in terms of resale, this actually holds its value pretty well. In the resale market, like in the new, like new stamps, newer stamps, few years old, they tend to hold value pretty well. If they are brand new bleed in a desirable color, they even sell more than retail price. So they are a fairly safe bag when it comes to Hermes um, buying it. You can get some bargains though from vintage um, bleed 27s, like in box calf and like Courchevel leather you can get some bargains now for me I typically always use twillies on this bag just because it's a very very light color I just feel much more comfortable to use twillies on it just to protect the bag that's my personal preference but you don't have to if you don't want to because it's not exactly a exclu exclusively top handle bag you do tend to just carry it on the shoulder anyway but I just like that peace of mind of using twillies in the bag especially because I have kids as well but yeah personal preference I'm just going to show you what actually fits inside because I think that this actually fits a fairly decent amount so I do always kind of keep my rain cover in there because even though this is Epsom leather any leather is susceptible to blisters if it's caught in a downpour so I always carry a rain cover wherever possible and then I've just got like a shopping bag a fold up one my Louis Vuitton key pouch with my key fob, sunglasses, this is just a sunglass case, that was a hard case as well, so this is bigger than say like a soft case, um, and then I've got my blue broom Bastia, which has just got my house keys in it, uh, hand sanitizer, I typically usually put this in like a glad bag or something, um, but I just didn't grab one, uh, and then I've got my child's face mask, 
for my daughter. And then I've got items in here. This is really compact. This was actually all the items that I had in my Chanel O case. I put them all in here and they all fit perfectly. And it's so much more compact in this little pouch. Um, I don't know. I don't, I got this probably on eBay. I don't think it'd be available anymore. I've had it for a very long time, but yeah, it's also got a face mask in there as well. So that's got my face mask in there and my phone. So that is all the items inside. See, look how much that fits. Like, wow. And there's still some set, some space. There is still space to carry a bit more um, if you want to. But I feel like that to me, I'm quite comfortable with that capacity. I probably wouldn't carry any more than that unless like I really had to or something. Um, or if, you know, or shopping and I had to chuck something else in my bag. Say I had my daughter's like some kind of little toy or something like that. But yeah, that fits no problem. And yeah, there's no impression marks whatsoever going on. Fits really well, closed really easily. So this fits beyond the essentials. It fits absolutely everything that you need and that little bit more. Um, fantastic handbag. Highly, highly recommend it. I think that that's probably pretty much all I can really sort of say. I don't really have any kind of cons per se. Uh, perhaps, perhaps the only con is that it's just single zippered so you have to zip it back and forward on the one zip and the fact that the zipper kind of gets a bit like wavy in that part where the D-rings are. So when you look at it, it kind of looks a bit off, but I, it's not exactly bothersome because you know that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the handbag. It's totally normal. Quality isn't affected. It's not going to detriment the zipper in any way. It's more of an aesthetic thing, how you look at it. It's like, it's kind of like curved a bit in those places, but yeah, that's probably it that I have for cons. Everything else I'm pretty happy with. Um, the leather itself is more like a, um, subjective thing as to whether you're really into Epsom or not. I actually quite like Epsom for the Bleed 27, but I pretty much only like Epsom in very light colors because it does get scratched, unfortunately. I do have like a kind of tiny little scratch on the corner and I don't think it's probably, I don't think it's really gonna focus in, but there is kind of like a really tiny, tiny, tiny one. It's like a little tiny nick over there. And um, there's like a one just underneath as well super duper like minimal hardly noticeable but that's probably about it um the good thing is that because it's in cray those scratches are really not going to be noticeable yeah so light color leathers for epsom if you have natural nails i think are pretty carefree oh the other thing that i have to say as well is that this bag is not easy to get unfortunately it is not easy to get it does come up online but not a lot it's it is scarcely available online also in the boutique it is hard to get you have to request it and just wait i asked for a bleed 27 it just happened to be the right timing that they got a cray one in but yeah the bleed 27 is unfortunately a bit hard to get it is possible though it's not considered a quota bag or anything like that so you just have to tell your sales associate that you're wanting one and what kind of colors you're wanting and hopefully um they can check in the system and lock one in for you or wait list you for one um if there are any Believe 27s available on Vestia Collective or Fashion File, I will link them in the description bar down below because like I said, you can get some good deals pre-loved and you can save on the retail price. So for me, I would have been happy to buy one pre-loved, but it just happened to be that at the time I was asking for a bag, I was asking for like a Birkin or a Kelly for my birthday. But then I also said, if you can't do a Birkin or Kelly, I am also after a Bleed 27 or a Pickerton. And she happened to have a Bleed 27 in Cray. And that was exactly the kind of combination I would have wanted anyway. Some colors do do sell for the retail price or more, even if they're pre-loved. So something like Cray would sell for probably more than the retail price if it's, um, pre-loved but excellent condition because it is a very desirable color but there are still some fairly good deals in the pre-loved market so i will link any down below in the description bar so go and check it out if you're after a bleed 27 but yeah that is it that is all that i have to say definitely recommend this bag and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys in my next one bye